Yeah. Now turning back to you, Miles, tell us about your Division One days and where you played ball in Division One. Um, I committed to Chicago State University out of high school, uh, out of IMG Academy to play for coach. You walked on with that, or how did that work? Um, yeah, I was a preferred walk on with Chicago State University. Um, I was actually ruled a non qualifier. They just made a new prep rule, I guess, when I was at IMG my last year, where they the NCAA will not take fifth year credits. So, like I said, my senior year, I got hurt and I did that postgraduate year, which therefore reclassed me. And I guess some of my credits from one of the high schools I went to were not NCAA accredited. So I actually was ruled a non-qualifier by 1.5 credits. So I had to redshirt. 1.5? Yeah. One and a half credits. One and a half credits was the reason I couldn't play my first year in college. That sounds like a cheat code to me. Man. It's go crazy. ahead, go ahead. But it is what it is. Um, then I ended up transferring to Western Kentucky University. Um, I was there. Um, I kind of picked Western Kentucky because my guy Shaman Williams was over there. Shout out to him. Um, he played in the NBA and he played at UNC. And he was kind of like a it's kind of like University a, of North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, University of North Carolina. I know he played with Seattle, um, the Celtics few other NBA teams, but he was kind of like an uncle to me the whole time I was at Western Kentucky. Um, I made a lot of good connections there. Um, it was it was a cool place. It was my first time kind of in, in the South at that time when I went to Kentucky. Um, I was pretty young. Um, I kind of got a police lot. escorts out of there? Um, no, nah, not really. But I mean, we had campus police and everybody showed a lot of love to me and the rest of the guys. We would get a lot of free food and just just a lot of a lot of love like that around around town and stuff. Everybody knew who we were. As soon as I got there, people would come up to me on campus, show me love for being on the basketball team. I had some reporters instantly when I first got to campus calling my phone, stuff like that. So that was a pretty cool experience for me. Um, and then describe describe uh, that instance when they hit your phone and uh, you know you have to really stick to the G code. You know what I'm saying and not say too much or yeah kind of have to dance around that. How did that work out? Yeah, they kind of um, they just hit me, asked me um, when I first started talking in the program, why I picked the school, kind of who was recruiting me if I ever visited prior to my commitment, um, kind of talked about my past, my high school, where I came from before my previous institution, and then just asked me expectations. And then um, that was like the first original one. And then there were little ones here and there where we'd be in contact just about how everything's been going, how we've been in the gym together. Because Kentucky is definitely a basketball state. Chicago, no, yeah. Ohio, there was real basketball states. Yeah, Indiana. I, I didn't I didn't really know too much about Kentucky basketball and how crazy they are about basketball until I got out there, but they definitely show a lot of love and they're big about their basketball. They love their basketball. And then uh, it was a great experience at both of those D1 schools. Um they definitely take everything serious. It's it's no joke. It's really a business being at a D1 university. Um, we ate good. We worked out good. We had good weight trainers. They don't play around at a D1 school. It's definitely a lot different than the junior college level as far as the benefits. A lot of upgrade from ramen, huh? Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. You definitely have a lot of options. When I was at, uh, when I was at Western Kentucky, we had like a meal card. We could take it, swipe it at Chick Fil A, Steak and Shake, Domino's. Um, There's like burrito bowl places there, Starbucks, oh. Panda Express, uh, little like oh. caf cafeteria with a buffet. So it was definitely a lot more options than junior college. Uh, we didn't really have much. We kind of just had to either eat fast food, order some pizza, go to the store, learn how to cook something, ramen noodles, or whatever. <laughs> That's crazy. That's what's up. Would um um also uh I'm trying to get like 
like Euro League and and um going to the Euro League, you're definitely on the radar. You're one of the top prospects uh in the Euro League. And could you tell me a little bit about more about that and what you anticipate and or the prep for it? And um just like being on the radar, how does that make you feel? Just kind of sum it up. Um it makes me feel good knowing that uh, I do have an agency that I work with and they're in contact with a lot of pro teams, whether it's in the Euro League or wherever, just different different countries, whether it's Israel, Albania, Spain, Mexico, Canada, all types of places. It's just cool. It's all a blessing. I'm kind of taking it all pretty patient, um, just waiting on the right deal, whatever's the best for my career going forward. But it's definitely a blessing. But at the end of the day, I still haven't signed my first pro deal yet. So at this point, I am still a prospect. So I've just been trying to stay the course, be humble, trust the process. Don't beat myself up over everything and uh, just control what I can control. Honestly, everything's going to present itself. God does have a plan. So I'm excited for everything going forward. Absolutely. I kind of, I kind of want you to elaborate more about that. Like, uh, from what we talk today, everything kind of revolves about uh, around one thing, which is um, your will to fight. Um, we talk about cheat code and cheat code, and most of the time, it's all about um, external issue, like how you present yourself to the outside world. But we haven't really touched on. How do you give yourself a cheat code that uh, keep yourself to keep pushing through? I know that um, not all people can be athletes like you, and many of them would probably like fall in between or like uh, give up midway. What message did you give yourself so you can just like push through, keep pushing through, and then just like it, it became your mantra, your cheat code to just keep on fighting? Yeah, no, for sure. I'm definitely not even going to sit here and lie to you. It's been a lot of times when stuff went wrong and I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to do this no more. Could just kind of discourage myself. And then every time I got to that mode or I, I was in a bad mood or I felt like, okay, maybe this isn't going to work out. I just mm -hmm. thought about everything I put in, everything I put into it, um, all the support I have around me and just, I really like thought about what would life be without basketball and I couldn't honestly see myself doing anything else. So that's kind of why I just kept going at it. Every time I just thought about it, I thought about how I started and when I started, how far I've came and just how I really haven't accomplished. Like I just felt like I haven't accomplished a lot yet, even though I have accomplished a lot more than the regular person does. But I feel like it's way more to accomplish. I'm just getting started and I'm excited for everything. I also um, do train kids on the side and stuff. That's and, amazing. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to get into that field too once my playing career is over with, kind of helping out kids and stuff. Um, I've done it before. Right now in like the past, past year, year and a half, I've kind of all been focused on myself, kind of just with my career and everything. So I haven't had the time. But it's definitely something I've talked to my family and close friends about getting into someday, kind of giving back to the basketball community and kind of helping other people with their goals. That's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, man, do you, you, you said a lot, man. I have a lot of respect for you um, and what you're doing and what you have done. Um, uh, shout out your Instagram one more time. My Instagram is Miles, M-I-L-E-S, underscore Weber, W-E-B-E-R. And then my brand's page is at Shop Fully Feared. Yes, so. sir. Yes, sir. And there's some fly gear on there. I always see you have positive posts. You And you have posts that, boom, that just knock you between the eyes and make you want to get it or get out the way. You know, and I feel that energy of fully fear because it's an energy coming off of your page too 
and it's, it's some good positive energy. It's not for everybody, but if you want to push forward, it's definitely for you. So, you know, as we kind of wrap it up, um, we're going to uh, we definitely want to thank you for joining us in Little Dynamite. Um, we have party, a parting gift for you to okay. choose from again. Um, and let's go through the selections again. We have these uh, 54 inch uh, laces in a nice uh, blue. These are uh, step up some shoes. You know, you throw them in there. It'll make some older shoes look brand new you know no that's way. Really, bring them back to life yeah yeah bring them right back to life or uh you can choose as a parting gift this combo uh we have these uh ghost pepper these haunted ghost pepper chips and these ones these extremely hot ones are the precursor to this uh one chip challenge because if you could do these oh uh, yeah you may be able to do this one. This one chip challenge. Uh, it's not open. It's nice and fresh. And, it's a uh, combo. You may have to. Yeah, you may have to run this combo by your agent because yeah. uh, you wouldn't want to ingest this before a tryout because oh, just no. as it goes it's in, it got to come it's out. It's a combo. That's Take a hit. that's a deadly two for one right there. <laughs> or or you can pick these uh, these uh, hardened step backs. Uh, wait a minute. It's a tag. Oh yeah, it's a tag to pop on this. You could pop the tag on these uh hardened step backs. Yes, sir. These step back tools. You know they got a nice indoor grip. You know you can get your practice on. You could do whatever, but this would definitely be uh, a parting gift. When I look at your tapes. Uh, I always think of uh, James Harden immediately. I was like, his step back J is off the chain. It's quick. It's, it's pronounced. And you could choose these uh, these uh, step back threes. Yeah, um, that's beautiful. I, yeah, and, uh, I need, I need these, those ones for sure. They, they, I know I know. Lil, Lil Dynamite wants me to uh, go with them laces, but I, 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 don't, I don't know if I can do it. I, I got to go with them Hardens. I can't pass them. You gonna go with these hardens? You gonna go with these step backs in your size, size eleven? You know what I mean? I hope she's not mad at me. It's okay. <laughs> I will take the, the lace any day. <laughs> <laughs> She'll take the laces. They they'll go up or her uh, gladiator sandals. The fifty four inches. They may go oh, yeah. all the way up. <laughs> so we definitely appreciate you joining us. Um, I'm gonna get your uh, address uh, where to send the shoes when we log off. Um, mm -hmm. We appreciate you mentoring kids. Uh, we appreciate you sharing your story with us. And we're definitely rooting for you as your journey uh, as an overseas uh, professional prospect and IMG Academy alum. Uh, thank you for joining us, Miles. Uh, I want to say a uh, little dynamite. What up, though? What up, what up, what up, what up? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate you guys for sure. All right, and uh, I'm Harry Dynamite, Dynamite Sports. We put the her in sports. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, little Dynamite. Flow like water, so I'm going mainstream. <laughs>